Don't, don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. You are listening to the Live to Create podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the official Live to Create podcast coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. I am your host, Shane Almgren, and I am joined today from Ontario, Canada, by the man who's been dubbed the Bob Ross of drywall, drywall sculptor extraordinaire Bernie Mitchell. In addition to the high-end homes and businesses he decorates, Bernie has toured both the U.S. and Canada doing demonstrations, teaching workshops, and putting his incredibly unique talents on display. So, Bernie, it's great to have you uh, on the show today. Uh, thanks for thanks for being here. Well, thanks so much for the invitation. Um, I came across your stuff on Facebook, <clears throat> excuse me, like I'm sure a lot of people have, and I've worked construction before, and anytime any of us wanted to try something that wasn't exactly on the punch list, it usually involved like inappropriate uses of a nail gun or flinging paint or putting a hole in a wall and generally ruining something expensive. Nobody was crafting master works of art out of uh, Home Depot job site materials, so when and where and how did you come up with this as an art medium? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I've, I've been in the drywall industry actually for almost 40 years. So it, it really just evolved out of some of, the, some of the things I was doing with just details on small panel walls. Like I, I was doing um, raised panels and uh, putting impressions into the material with, uh, with wheat and barley stock kind of thing eh and just just the relief um uh, you know what it what it showed me uh i i just run with it and uh, and it just grew did you have a, a background in painting or <laughs> yes i did have some painting experience when i was much younger and uh, in through high school i actually painted quite a lot um the other thing that i was involved with was uh leather work i was doing um leather carvings it's it's the same kind of relief form right uh just with a, a very small amount of material but again when it comes to relief it's all about lighting so um you know everything just gets projected does a three-dimensional image almost and uh, and it worked very similar with the drywall mud and so you're not using any special mud or anything right it's just straight up joint compound from the hardware store um, yeah, it's joint compound, but I, I, I mix about a 50-50 mix with a setting compound. And the setting compounds, uh, they activate very quickly. So you can get anything from a 20-minute right up to, you know, 90-minute and longer uh, as a setting compound. So when they're combined, the product is pretty firm within 45-50 minutes kind of thing, eh? And is there a certain consistency that it's got to be when you stick it on the wall so it doesn't drip or it doesn't harden too fast? Well, that's kind of up to the person working with it. You know, I like it fairly firm for just different different objects that I'm putting on there. And I like the, the, the ability to be able to use it when it is set up to even shave material, right? So um, I have a certain amount of time to model it with uh, with the spoon or whatever modeling tool I'm I'm using at the time, and then as it as it goes through the process of uh, of drying, then I'm able to um, I can add additional material or I can sand it a little more detail into it, and I can uh, you know there's a there's a lot of options. Uh, what different types of implements do you use to sculpt with? <laughs> <laughs> My tools are very simple. Pretty much just a, a small um, drywall knife, which I, it's only like a four inch knife, which I use predominantly, and uh, a kitchen spoon. The kitchen spoon, it's a, it's a modeling tool for me, and uh, as long as I've got a little bit of water mist on the surface of that compound when I'm creating a subject, I'm able to move the material around with that spoon real freely. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pretty much my basic tools that I use. And then when you're working on one of these, do you have a picture in front of you that you're using as a reference, or is this all done just straight out of your head? Uh, when it comes to the landscapes, yes, that's right out of my head. When it comes to a subject matter like the wolf or whatever, yes, I, I, I do have, I do use reference material. When it comes to the landscapes behind these subjects, that's where I'm able to really um, create some perception to things. I, um, for when it comes to size and horizon, uh, you know, a visual that just keeps taking you further back into the image, eh? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got a lot of a lot of different methods 
of uh, of creating that that depth. So. When I was doing some research uh, earlier in the week, I had I wrote down the question: Has anyone ever called you the Bob Ross of drywall? And then I saw on your website that you actually had linked out to an article where you were referred to as the Bob Ross of drywall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was pretty comical uh, actually. On on uh, <clears throat> one of the firms that that carried it, I don't know if it was Insider Art or Fubiz or whichever. Um, uh, many of the remarks, it, it kind of started off, and and uh, and I wasn't really familiar with uh, Bob Ross. Eh? Mm-hmm. You know, and I I seen the terminology of uh, this happy little tree and uh, all this sort of thing. <laughs> I really wasn't familiar with Bob Ross until after that. Now that you are familiar with him, or what do you think of the comparison? Well, I, I still haven't. I, I I haven't really watched this program. Oh, right? gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean that was something that I kind of grew up on. He would basically take thirty minutes, and he it was you know he was an oil painter, and in thirty minutes he would craft these incredible scenic, uh, you know, mountain streams rivers whatever and it was yeah. learning to pay with bob ross i had the bob ross paint set <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you have a, a background in anything technical i know you've been doing the drywall for a while was that something you went to school for or did you just get into it how did you get how do you, how does one get into really high-end drywall <laughs> well yeah like it's, uh, i had started when i uh, when i completed high school and uh I actually traveled to the other side of the country here. I hitchhiked out to, to Alberta and just made my way. And I kind of growing up around the construction sites a little bit. So it was an easy fit for me. And then I uh, took on and got involved with the drywall crew and continued on with it. Um, as far as uh, getting into the higher end homes for me was was quite easy too actually um, I, I I then moved back to Ontario and uh, the area I live in here in southern Ontario it's cottage country and uh, some really beautiful uh, lakes and waterfront homes and cottages so it was a good fit um, I saw in the tutorial section of your website that lighting and location are big considerations when you do one of these pieces which I, I wouldn't have really thought of can you tell us why they're important and what the key elements to look for are? Yeah, these sculptures are are probably. I, I'm I'm a little bit off base here, but as far as I'm concerned, it's about eighty percent lighting and twenty percent sculpture, because um, even for an amateur to start into this, and it's very easy, simple tools, simple products, but lighting is 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 the key to all of it. And are you wanting direct light or natural light? Do you want something overhead shining on it or coming up from the floor? What what is the i the optimal way to have it lighted? Yes, you really want a, an indirect light form, um, sideways, above, below, uh, whichever you choose to sculpt to. Okay? Any direct light on that surface really eliminates uh, a lot of the shadows that you're really looking for to create this image. Do you do want shadow? Oh, yes. And, you know, it brings out texture of the surface. All of those things are really key to projecting it and presenting it uh, properly. Eh? So, yes, the, the light form is, is really, really important. Would you ever, if you found like a great wall that's the right size or whatever for something that you want to do, do you ever do custom lighting to embellish or help feature something that you've worked on? I, yeah, I, I choose to be involved with that end of it um, because I, I'd much rather choose to sculpt the image with the proper lighting already in place. That wasn't always the case. Uh, I can tell you uh, when I, uh, you know, over the years, I, I've done I've done some sculptures uh, in areas that really weren't presented properly, and and uh, it's a disappointment to me because uh, you know all intent of the customer is that they were going to uh, introduce lighting to to uh, bring these images up. I'm using a light when I when I create them. You know, I, I, that's with the full intent that they were going to introduce, like I say, uh, additional lighting. Gotcha. So are most of these pieces commissioned works in private residences or businesses? Pretty much. Do you do just a lot of this for fun? Do you have a studio? Yeah, pretty much all of my work is, is commissioned work. 
I, I've done uh, select pieces on pieces of drywall too, and I've shipped them, but you're limited on the size, and I'm really confining it when they're done that way because it's most of my work I, I choose to use an area. And, uh, and I don't confine it to a square box. Right? I, I use an area and I spread the image out a little bit. Right. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a, a beautiful piece of character on, on a wall. And then when it's painted up as the wall color, it's, you know, it's just there. Uh, it's the simplicity of it. And how, how do you safely package a drywall sculpture art piece to ship? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had some I've had some good luck with that actually. Uh, I I recently shipped uh, a, an image down to New Orleans. It was flown down, but I created it up uh, pretty well. Uh, there was uh, it arrived in New Orleans uh, all in one piece anyway. No no cracks or or anything. But uh, so I would mount the drywall onto piece of plywood and frame out. Uh, the exterior structure so that nothing can penetrate it. So where does one practice something like this? I know you do tutorials and I would think at your own personal house at this point, you probably have to be running out of wall space. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the one there. I've done the one with the loon above the fireplace and that's about the only one in our home. Uh, is there a reason that you haven't filled out your home with these? No particular reason. I, it's the one that it's in a location where I get to view it every day and enjoy it every day. And is that a scene that, or do you have any particular scenes or particular animals that you like doing more than others? Well, I, I favor horses and birds too. Waterfowl, like loons and blue herons, osprey. I do like them. I don't know what else to tell you on this. <laughs> well, are, are you? A <laughs> but that's my that's my preference, though. I mean, uh, and horses. Uh, there's so much character in horses. You know, they just make great images. Right? Do you have a? Are you an outdoorsman? I mean, is this something that when you go out in nature, you're looking for these kind of things, anyways? Ah, uh, very much so. I'm an avid uh, canoeist, and uh, my wife and I enjoy uh, paddling around quite a lot. We do a lot of backcountry canoeing. And camping that's been something that's uh, been a major part of my life do you you're you're always <laughs> you're you're always going to see something new around the next corner right and is that something that creatively inspires you you know there's a lot of people that have daily habits or rituals that lend themselves to the creative process whether it's sitting in meditation or listening to music or taking a walk out in nature those are things they conscientiously do to sort of get the creative juices flowing does that factor in for you at all? Uh, no question about it. Uh, you know, I, I observe, you know, while I seem to observe everything, and uh, when something's out of place, it's going to be interesting. You know, I, I'm just always looking for it. Are there any other creative outlets besides drywall that you do right now? Uh, not so much anymore. I grew up uh, somewhat around music, and uh, it was a bit of a passion earlier on, but uh, I don't seem to play the piano anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, uh, not really. Uh, it, it really is all about the art for me now, and uh, I, I very much enjoy it. On this show, we talk a lot about right brain and left brain interaction. And have you ever found that to be a challenge or what has been the biggest challenge for you as a creative type who's also a successful business person? <laughs> well, it's funny you ask that question because the successful business person, I, I've got a bit of difficulty there when I'm so passionate about what I'm doing and so focused on it that I, I, uh, I choose then to ignore the managing everything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to love my next question then. <laughs> yeah, perfect segue. So here I'm in Nashville. I've got a ton of friends who are uber creative and uber talented, but they can't balance a ledger or show up to a meeting on time or meet a deadline. And the starving artists, it's a real thing, and they far outweigh the successful ones. And I think we all know people who are whose earning potential is nowhere near their talent level. So I guess it's a two-part question. <laughs> what advice well, do you have for people like that to get them over the hump? And two, do you even think it's fair to define creative success that way? If somebody's doing what they love and they're churning out incredible pieces of art or music or sculpture or whatever their outlet is, 
Do they need the money to validate their efforts? <laughs> I'd far sooner um, look at upon myself as being a success with the results of what I've, what I've accomplished with, with the work that I do. Financially, that, that, that's really not important. It, it is important, but, you know, if money was important to me, I'd have some. The work is, would be the number one thing for me. So just the, the joy of creativity is the reward. Yeah. Uh, so I really can't give, I'm not, I'm not really able uh, to really give anybody good advice in that direction. <laughs> Uh, well, how do you tell somebody to get comfortable with just being content with the reward of the art and the creativity? Well, I think I think anybody that's that's into the arts, uh, I think they'll they all feel the way I do, and it'd be icing on the cake if somebody was going to pay me well to be a major success. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I I wouldn't want the money to interfere with with what I'm going to leave you in the end. I wouldn't want it to be a factor. Tell us, where all have you ended up doing this? I know you've done some showcases and uh, some expos or events, but what have you got to do? Where all have you got to travel showing this off? Well, I've done many of them um, in the Western, in Western Canada, you know, like through, uh, through Alberta. And in Ontario here, I've done a great many of them locally pretty much. And I guess uh, a year ago, I was down to Chicago and uh, and I did one for the Trimtex company. Uh, it's a drywall manufacturer of, of moldings and beads and such. And I guess the other one was the the one you had just mentioned there through Continental uh, Building Products. I was down to I guess New Orleans, and they did a, an expo in the spring. I guess that's about as far as my travels have taken me. I noticed on your Facebook page you've got I don't know it's over fifty thousand followers. Was that, yeah. uh, were you kind of surprised to see that much interest in what you were doing? Very much so. How did, um, what, what was the first thing that got, was there a particular video or a picture that you posted? Yeah, we had a, um, a friend of mine from uh, Northern Ontario here. Uh, he's also in the business of drywall. And uh, we had gotten together to do these YouTubes just to share it with uh, some fellow tradesmen on a drywall form. And uh, uh, really, that was the whole intent, was just to share it with these guys. <laughs> had no idea that it was going to get shared the way it did. And uh, it's overwhelming. So we, we put the first one out uh, about three years ago and uh, had a very good response. And so we got together and did another one two years ago. And... Uh, it's done fairly well on YouTube, but uh, someone had, had picked it up off of Facebook or put it on the Facebook. They just shortened it, put their own music to it, and uh, it really exploded. I think it's made in shortage that had shared it, and, and I, it's somewhere up around 106 million, right? And there's been numerous others. It's, uh, I know it exceeds 160 million, right? Did, did that bother you at all that somebody had changed the video and added their own music and... Or were you just pleased that they were doing well, that to share? <laughs> At first I had, uh, I was disappointed, but the response uh, was incredible. And my email and just everything got, got flooded with, uh, with so much that uh, I had a hard time coping with everything. You turned into a minor celebrity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It really was overwhelming, and it still is. I, like I think uh, there's another one out there, Insider Art, and it's uh, well. Even last night, I think it's it still went over. It's like 250 thousand views since last night till this morning. Right? Why do you think this <laughs> piques people's interest so much? Is it just because it's a different medium that people aren't used to seeing artwork displayed in? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think that's that's probably it. I, it's a simple medium, and uh, as long as they get familiar with the products that I'm using, and uh, I think it's something that um, you could encourage easily encourage others to to try. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a forgiving product, so it, it's something that people can work with without uh, spending a lot of money, and uh, you know, see where see where it heads for them. I, I get a lot of people on this show that have instructional materials, instructional DVDs, YouTube channels, and they are all about passing on what they do rather than just, you know, 
basking in the individuality of doing something that most people don't or can't do. What is it about the teaching aspect that appeals to you? Well, <clears throat> I'm encouraged um, by others because uh, I'm getting a lot of their feedback. What they're doing, they're, they're sharing their images with me now, right? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty rewarding too, right? Not only that, but I want to see where people head with this because, I mean, I'm, I'm only, I've been doing it for over 20 years now, but I seem to be doing the same things that, uh, you know, I, I expand a little bit each time that I do it, introduce something new, but uh, basically I, I, I really think that there's other artists out there that, that are going to take the idea and run with it, and I think we're going to see some incredible work with it, and I'm looking forward to it. So you're, you're basically creating a community here. Uh, I mean, it could I be a virtual or a, an online community and not necessarily in your neighborhood. But Yeah, I'm not. Was anybody doing this before you were? I don't know. I don't know if they were. I, I, there's, there's others. There's always been uh, plaster professionals out there that, that have taken it to extreme levels of decorative work also. And to me, their images, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same form of relief. And uh, I don't know how they did it. I, I'm not a plasterer, but, you know, their work was, was just beautiful and or, ornate. Um, I've just taken it in a different direction. And I know there's a great many other people out there doing it now. I know stateside, there's a professional there. Um, his name's Tom Moberg. Uh, he does incredible work. And uh, I didn't find or, or, or touch on any of this work until I, uh, until I moved to the East here about 20 years ago now, when everything was on the computer, right? And I had access to everything. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not the only one. There's, there's, there's others. Is there anything that you would like to craft or sculpt and don't feel like you quite have the talent level down yet? It's just, it's like an opus, something that you eventually want to say you did at some point in the future. Portraits. Uh, I've had many requests for portraits, and I've, I've played with that a little bit. I'm, I'm not uh, proficient enough to, to say that, uh, that I'll be doing them anytime soon uh, for clients. But that's, that's one area I'd like to, uh, to hit on. What's the most challenging part of that? Is it just getting, I mean, is it facial features, getting it to look like the person? Uh, yes, it is for me. Yeah, I find difficulty in that. That's something I should be working on. Eh? Is that something we're practicing sketching or painting or something like that helps out? Or is it, do you really have to practice this in the drywall well, mud? The, the human features are, are far more detailed than when I, <clears throat> it versus me doing, um, you know, uh, an animal figure of any sort where, you know, I get to hide it. I get to hide that those imperfections with with texture. So, you know, it's just something that I need to work on more. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I'm 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 still going to be doing what I do, regardless of of uh, being the success or, or or whatever you may want to refer to it as. I'll still be doing my own thing. I don't, I don't have any real projection of flying all over the world and, and doing this sort of work. I, I'd far sooner uh, encourage others to get involved with it and keep my life a little simpler. Uh, so one of the things that I'm really curious about and I like to talk about is people who are super highly creative is what some of their daily habits and routines are. Uh, so I've got a few questions. Well, first, is there anything that you do, you know, some people have got to paint with uh, music on. Some people... When you're in your creative space, does it have to be set up a certain way? Well, yeah, I, with me, music is a, music's a, a real important part of my day, whether it's uh, on a job site or whether it's in the studio uh, working on whatever sculpture I'm working on. It, it, it just makes me tick. Is there a particular style or genre that works best for you? Oh, no. I like it all. I like it all. Are you a, a night owl or an early riser? Oh, I'm an early riser. Yeah. <laughs> I got to shut her down real early in the evening. Eh? So your creativity sort of dissipates as the sun goes down. Yeah, I guess it does. Eh? When it gets dark, it's time for me to go to bed. Eh? 
And then when you get up in the morning, what does your morning ritual look like? Oh, it's the greatest part of the day. I, I just uh, like to sit outside and observe. So that's, I mean, you're having a cup of coffee. Are you watching the sun come up? Are you up that early? Well, sometimes I am, yeah. Usually when it's getting daylight, I'm already up. But, uh, yeah, that, that morning coffee is a nice thing just to sit back, kick back, and, and figure out your day. Yeah? Are you a television watcher? I am. What do you like to uh, watch? Well, I, I watch a lot of the programs on, uh, on the Discovery Channel, of course, and, and the National Geographic Channel. I, I love a lot of this, uh, some of the reality shows that take them on the outdoors, adventures sort of thing. When you go into a, a house and you figure out the best location for a project, the actual creation process from there, how long start to finish? Are we talking hours or days or weeks or months? How long does it take to do a wall-sized landscape? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably in the range of about 40 hours. Uh, yeah, like a regular work week, maybe maybe longer. It's really quite enjoyable for you because I, when I put these together, I'm really putting it together with the clients. And uh, although uh, we both uh, share in, in the subject matter ideas, uh, when I start putting the scene together, I, I really want them to be part of it too, right? Because it is theirs and it is permanent. So uh, it's really rewarding, you know? So you actually invite and welcome watching eyes. Some people want to be completely left alone and don't bother me until this is complete, but you like the hands-on interactive approach? Oh, for sure. Definitely. I, I want them to be involved with what I'm doing. Eh? It, uh, it's fun for them and, and it's, it's great for me too. Have you ever put something on a wall and a client did not like it and you had to remove it? Never. That's not happened. <laughs> You know, I, I, I've been really fortunate in that I'm not doing, uh, my construction experience has pretty much been uh, private clients. So I'm in doing private homes for the most part. Uh, they become my friends, you know, if you know what I mean. I, you know, it's not like working for clients. It's like working for friends. What percentage of your business is doing these sculptures versus traditional just drywall installation? Well, I'm not really a traditional drywaller. Again, I've been fortunate enough that people allow me to, to um, do some interesting details and features in their homes outside of the sculptures. So, which means I, I mean, I really love to build wall units, uh, fireplaces, ceiling features, something unique and uh, so that's just allowed me to to really expand uh, with what I'm doing. So when you finish a commission project in somebody's house, what is the ideal feedback that you can get from them? Well, they just love it. And if I get back to the lighting sources, if, if I'm doing these in an area where natural light has an impact on that image, uh, as, the, as the light changes in that room, uh, so does the image. So it's an image that'll look differently throughout the day uh, as the power of light takes over and, and moves and brings out some of the details much stronger as the light moves around, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really something that, uh, that they get to enjoy other than that, uh, that lighting source that they'll have in an evening light. So it's, uh, yeah. So if somebody decided they wanted to get into this and try it, what would you advise them? What are the most important skills, artistic skills, that they need to cultivate? And then sort of personality traits as far as patience and, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, the, the, products, the product is simple. Uh, the tools are simple. And uh, it's easy for them, I think, to, to get involved with it and experiment with this stuff. Uh, it's not expensive if they're not happy with it. If, they, if they're really uh, playing on a, on a painted surface, then, I mean, they can remove what they're doing and, and uh, start again. I mean, you can wipe the wall off with a rag after you've wiped the, the majority of the product off. You know, I, I think they've, they've got a lot of canvas within a home <laughs> to work with, mm -hmm. uh, with without being totally committed. I guess really getting familiar with uh, and getting comfortable with the tools that you're going to use and, uh, and the application of the material. And, uh, and with that, uh, 
I think then you know it's just getting comfortable with the tools that that would probably be the most important thing is this uh, a technique that's say more expensive or cheaper than learning to say oil paint or watercolor well I don't know I I believe this is uh, this is a fairly uh, cheap medium to be using I mean I've done I've done some pretty expensive uh, sculptures with like forty dollars worth of material, so you can't get any simpler than that, right? And if somebody, if you're not practicing on an actual physical wall, for example, if you were doing something to ship somewhere, are you still doing that on sheetrock or on? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, I, I'll still do it on drywall. The surface of drywall, when it comes to using drywall muds, it soaks in. Uh, the moisture goes into the drywall and it has a very good bond. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to do it on a harder surface where, that, where the moisture out of the material, because drywall mud's about 50% water, and if it's got nowhere to go, if it can't soak into the surface, it'll want to escape and it comes up as just air bubbles on the surface of the material. So. Yeah, I've always just used drywall. I may draw, I may uh, mount that drywall on a piece of plywood, as I have for for shipping purposes, just for rigidity. But yeah, it's, it's drywall for me. And then one last question before we get into the final fourteen. I've been on your Facebook uh, perusing some of the things that were on there, and it looked like it looked like sort of mathematical designs. And I don't know if that was something that was done in drywall or if it was possible to do, but it, it looked like some sort of like a combination of modern art and fractals. Yeah, it, I think that would have been a fireplace, was it not? I don't recall. Uh, I do. I think I remember you saying that that's something that could be done in drywall. I, didn't, I don't remember if it was. Yeah, it's just a graphic design that I created. And, uh, and again, I'm just using scrap drywall to do that. And a product through the Trimtex company. And it's a, it's a reveal bead, which I can get in quarter inch or half inch depth. And uh, when I put a second layer of drywall on, then I can I can panel it off. So it just creates all these shadow lines. So uh, you can easily do some really creative graphics with it. And uh, it's probably one of my favorite products. I know you said that some people were starting to share with you the stuff that they were doing. Are there any names, anyone that we should be keeping a lookout for that seem really promising to you? Uh, not so far. But I'm sure you're going to be seeing uh, a lot of people get involved with it. I know there are people that are, that are running with it. So I'm encouraged by what they're sending me. And, uh, and I, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of this. I, I think it's, it's something that could be trendy in the housing market. I, I would think it would be absolutely huge. Yes. Well, that brings me to the end of my scripted questions, and now we get to the final 14 that all of the guests get, if you're ready for it. <laughs> you're going to have to maybe do some editing here. That's, that's fine. <laughs> um, I think I already know the answer to number one. We already talked about it, which if your job yeah. only paid the bills and not a penny more, would you still do it? Oh, absolutely. I was going to put money on that. Yeah. Number two, what talent or skill do you not have that you wish you did? Well, uh, we already talked about that too, and that's my managing skills because I, you know, unfortunately, I'm able to ignore everything outside of what I'm focused on when it comes to the work, and uh, you know, <laughs> my my life seems to rotate around that. But you are just 100% compartmentalized there. <laughs> I am, and uh, the frustration doesn't come in until all the paperwork's in front of you, and I'm under, you know, I'm I'm not able to 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 give it my full attention. Fill in the blank. I am a success if I... I'm a success if I leave a client and there's the reward, as I said before, is, is that I've achieved uh, what I want to in the image and, and I've got a very happy client there. And conversely, I am a failure if I... I'm a perfectionist and, uh, you know, and at all costs, I want to have achieved what I'm completely happy with. And when I'm not, I'm probably the most disappointed person in the world. What is the single best piece of advice that you followed so far to get where you are today? Well, I've, I've, I've had a great amount of encouragement, that's for sure. And uh, I knew early on that, that uh, it appealed to people uh, because they give me the opportunity to do it in their homes. And that's when I was first starting out. And uh, it was in its simplest form. I was doing 
small flowers and birds. And, uh, you know, they might be just kind of discreet on the wall, but they were still there. I guess that would be it. What is a piece of well-intentioned advice you're glad you ignored to get where you are today? (laughs) Well, I'm not going to go on about this one, but uh, I was discouraged from getting back into the construction work when I'd had a major... uh, I'd had a major injury with my back, and uh, and it wasn't until it took about a year or so for me to uh, to push myself to get back into the drywall business, regardless of what everybody else said. And if I had never done that, I wouldn't be where I am here. <laughs> that would have been a poor fee- poor piece of advice uh, on the people that were instructing me that way. We're getting personal now. We are. Yeah. What? character trait do you like best about yourself sincerity what character trait do you like least i get too emotional fill in the blank i believe every child should have the opportunity to i've been fortunate i i grew up with uh, with great parents and uh lived in a small community and uh we got to be kids you know i I think well. I think kids today. I, I think the the world is too fast paced, and they're unable to grow up as children. We're forcing them to be more mature at a younger at a younger age. Well, that's my view on it, anyway. <laughs> well, that might be a nice tie into this next question. If you could suggest one piece of self improvement that everyone on Earth would adopt, what would it be? Oh, just be happy. Just be happy. If you could have any superpower, we're talking comic book superpowers, what would it be? Oh, I'd love to fly. Always wanted, always wanted to fly. Eh? If you could have dinner with anyone alive or dead, who would it be? Oh, it would be my father. We'd lost him uh, many years ago. An hospitable nearby planet has been discovered and you've been recruited to help colonize it. You get to take any three personal items with you that you wish. What are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, mine are simple. Uh, they'd be just simple tools. It'd be a hammer, a chisel, and a spoon. I'm going to throw the spoon in for good measure. Hammer, chisel, and spoon. Like it. Yeah. All right, last one here. You're almost done. You've just won a Lifetime Achievement Award in your field, and we want to hear your acceptance speech. Uh, we want to hear all the people that you have to thank. Oh, I'm, again, my, my list is going to be very short, but it's, it's going to be my, my, uh, my dear wife and, uh, and my family that are all around me that have done nothing but encourage me uh, along always. It's so important. Eh? That's about it for me. Eh? Any parting words of wisdom that you have for listeners out there who are creative that you might want to inspire or encourage to explore new things or do something to hone their craft as sort of an expert master craftsman? What would you tell them? Well, I, I, that's what I've been doing all along here. I'm, I'm thinking is that uh, I've been trying to encourage uh, others to uh, to play with these products and uh, I think it should be uh, even in the school system for for people to be using this and I think we're going to see some some great artists in the future using these products well the website is www.berniemitchell.ca and Facebook it's artistic drywall by Bernie Mitchell are there any other social media channels or links that our listeners should know about well, that's that's pretty much it. I'm on Instagram also under B Mitch One. I guess that'd be about the other. Yeah, that'd be that'd be it. Great. Well, Bernie, it was an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, I absolutely love what you do. Enjoyed the conversation very much. Well, <laughs> uh, right back at you. I, I enjoyed speaking with you. Hey? Well, great talking to you, sir. Best of luck, and I'm gonna we'll keep following you. Okay. Well, thanks a great deal there, Shane. You have a good day. All right, take care. Once again, that was drywall sculptor Bernie Mitchell. For more information on Bernie, his work, and his teaching materials, please visit berniemitchell.ca. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today. You are listening to the Live to Create podcast, and this is Shane Ongren reminding you to dream big, be inspired, and live creatively. (laughs) 